Okay, I'm back again, day two. I've uh, soldering ESCs. I've been looking at mine. These motors are nice in the fact that they have a long cable, but of course the way we're having it, uh, we don't need those. So first thing to do is to desolder the connections on the ESCs. I've gone ahead and cut my uh, new heat shrink. This is very heavy duty. Um, I have both two of the boards here. This is the side with, I was kind of disappointed this is actually a sticker. It is not a heat sink. Uh, so that's kind of a concern, but about that um, being that way. Uh, I'm kind of surprised, but it's the way it is. Uh, looking at the soldering and looking at the boards, I've got uh, the other side under the magnifying glass. And the first one I'm going to do are the hardest ones um, for the controls here. Uh, they're underneath this little piece of uh, covering, which comes off fairly easy. And we're going to essentially solder those uh, in that. Uh, so I've got a magnifying glass here. I'm going to give this a go see how well that works. I've uh, improvised a stand for my soldering iron. It's, uh, it's one of the problems not having a stand. It's easy for it to come off the table. I also I have a sponge here and I have some copper uh, type here to clean the tip. I need to be sure that the tip is very clean. And then the other thing I have, I happen to have this gadget from way back when, which is a solder sucker. Basically, you press it there, you're ready, and you want to get that bad solder and go back to the uh, 6040. So basically, you put it there, you heat it up, hit it, and it sucks it out. What happens a lot of times with solder, uh, as you're wiping or whatever, you may get certain little beads there, and they'll stick to your board and can cause it short. I've also got my own meter here that I'm going to check the connections to. Um, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, and we've got the tip's not necessarily very, um, very small. So usually I wipe it, you know, put it in here, and then I put a little bit of solder just to get it kind of uh, glossy. Okay. Now, let me check to be sure on these dimensions. I'm not going to make another mistake like I did last time, but uh, what we want uh, right now is uh, f well, 50 centimeter wires for these controls. So we're going to do the hard part first. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is desolder those connections, see if that works out. If not, uh, well, no, so, you know, I'm getting, using a magnifying glass here. You can see you don't want any solder to be there. And we want to get that bad solder out first. So basically I cock the connection, spits out maybe what solder that was in there. And then you have to look down and you want to be sure not to obviously hit any of the installation. So I'm going through here. And you can see my, it just magnifies it. Uh, it's good to have a good grip on this. And so if you notice also, need to notice the color of wires. Of course, we've got another one here too, but we're gonna do all three of those when we cut. So basically we do that and then press the soldering and that sucks it out should. All right, so we got those out like that. And we can flip over and see these here. This, um, you can see that it's got the kind of a brown, red, and yellow. With this wire strippers, I'm just going to use those to get it, hopefully get it stripped. Again, when you're working with these small wires, it can be a challenge. 
and it's nice to have a stripper just to, just to having a fool with a razor blade or something like that. Sometimes it doesn't work. This tool I got at Amazon, it's about $15. I've got my solder that I'm going to go ahead and pre tin this. I want to see it nice little shine to it. Last thing we need to do is we need to tin that board. Sometimes it's better to put your solder first. The red. Yellow. Obviously, I need to desolder these. Um, usually, press it down. And you get that chip there. Just 